All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Tony Gomez Show. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Arnulfo Gutierrez, singer for Drastic Actions and Ill Adjusted. What's going on, Arnulfo? Oh, not too much. Just waiting for this interview and uh, getting this ball rolling with a live audience, I take it, for today? Yeah, first time. man. I, yeah, it's my first time doing this. Thanks so much for your patience and especially for rescheduling with me uh, for today. Yesterday, you know, sometimes, as you know, as well as I do, a food service can be uh, it's a it's a different uh, adventure every day. And, uh, you know, sometimes you have to uh, change your strategies and move people and get aces in their places. And yesterday was a was a day that I had to be an ace in my place and take care of the end of the month inventory at work. So oh, yeah. thanks a lot for your understanding, brother, and and uh, getting you back on the show uh, today uh, meant a lot to me because, uh, man, I've, I've been running to you a lot more lately whenever I go and get my, my favorite tacos in town over at Chacho's, <laughs> and I've been missing you. I missed yeah. you when I was there last weekend, and, uh, man, so uh, hopefully you're going to be getting back in there so that way everybody can get the the taco kingpin back in there uh, in the kitchen uh slopping out the best freaking tacos here in Corpus. And yeah. in the meantime, how long are you looking in recovery wise until you bounce back into the kitchen? Man, I'm just looking for the doctors. Okay. Right now I'm still healing. Uh, I got an open wound that's healing. So I'm going okay. on at least uh, two weeks so far. And uh, this actually Monday coming up, I go and hopefully he takes out the rest of the staples. I have five. They took out two. Now I'm down on three. So hopefully Let's say maybe by the end of February, hopefully I'll be good. Yeah. So, Sooner yeah, than better, A little, man. A little the setback. Better. You know, you get older and your body don't yeah, move we, as fast as it does. <laughs> it, that's exactly right. We got all kinds of challenges. Yeah. And uh, it, it goes with the territory. But, uh, you know, I'm glad that you're doing everything that you can to make get yourself a uh, uh, 110%. So that way you can get back on the stage, kicking some ass with you and you bros and, and ill-adjusted and drastic actions. Yep. I'm ready. Well, kick ass. I'm sure you're anxious, man. I know you're restless, dude. You're, uh, you're used to being, you know, like me going to work every day. We got our own uh, dad routines and stuff and kind of being away from the, that usual routine can kind of uh, take a little adjusting, but you know, that's more reason why I wanted to get you on here and, and kind of keep you, give you some busy work right now and uh, share, you know, your background, your history with I a lot of folks it. here. That, oh man, my pleasure. With a lot of folks here in Corpus that really haven't had, you know, uh, had the insight on your background and as well as drastic, right. drastic actions and kind of we'll, we'll get to uh, talking about ill adjusted here uh, later in the interview, interview as well. But yeah. to get us started, you know, you and I have been jamming in the corporate scene for decades, bro. And, um, you know, we've seen a lot of bands come and go, but Drastic Actions never fucking quits, dude. And nope. you're great. Yeah, that's right, man. You're a great vocalist. Your presence it, on stage, is, it, it kicks ass. And it's it's always a rowdy time when you guys are playing, man, because, you know, the crowd always shows up and they're ready to sing along the songs with you all like uh, uh, we're punks, we're drunk um still fighting i like the, the channel and still fighting yeah. and of course uh, everybody's favorite fuck you so <laughs> i love it because you know <laughs> so many so many fans that always show up at your show man they're they're chanting along with you they know the songs and uh they've been following you for the years it seems like they've grown up with you as, as at the yeah. same time and uh that's a great feeling when you get to play your hometown crowd and uh they they love you and and are, are just you know um so taken to you and that's a you know that's something you got to earn here in this town you know because we, we've hard. seen a lot of it's hard right you know the yeah. consistency and keeping a lineup together of the same guys it, it, it's always a um uh, it's there's obstacles that come up with that you know life kids work yeah and uh you know it takes a lot of flexibility and uh, understanding on on each one of the band members to kind of keep pushing on and keep looking at the future and not just oh shit you know so and so wasn't able to make it today's rehearsal. I think we're gonna have to find another guitar player or something like that. You know, it's you you gotta be flexible when you're dealing with the right people to jam with. Oh, and yeah. um, you know, it's a lot of it is just respect. You want them to be able to bring the best, and you want to be able to bring the best and share it with them. So uh, having to work with everybody's schedules and and dealing with uh with life in general can can be daunting. But you know, when you got a band like Drastic Actions, you know. Uh, persevering through through the years like that 
um, you know more than anybody else the the ups and downs and the challenges of holding the band together. Oh and, yeah, uh, keeping it going strong. The, be, right? the behind the behind the scenes is, is something <laughs> else. Yeah, there is man. In in your band, who does the uh, who hits each other up for for rehearsals? Do you reach out for the guys or is it Mike? Oh, uh, it's usually everybody. Everybody gets restless. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, so what are we gonna yeah. do? You know this, this and that. And when it comes down to it, like you said, it it takes a uh, communication between the bands, and it's like, well, I got work, I got to get out, and at this time, if we can do it at six, and somebody says, well, I can't do it till seven thirty, you're like. Man, uh, but we got to settle sometimes it even um, you got to save it for a day that's for the family like on a Sunday it's like hey you know everybody's off we got to do it and you make time for the family during the week just so you can have that Sunday for the band so but that's just it's just something that we got to do I mean like you said we've been do- I me and my brother got this band together in 96 so we're it's just working through working through it that's all it is i can't oh see myself doing anything else if we're not doing this i, I gotta keep busy you know what i mean so yeah it just it came about yeah. yeah so you and mike you and mike started drastic actions back in 96 huh yep sure did wow As a, man we started in 96 under a, a different name it was actually we were actually called narco satanicos and um so fuck yeah now, we had a reputation that followed us still to this day, but not as wild. You know, we would hit the first string and then whoosh, chaos would just erupt, fights. <laughs> and it's just, yeah. we got to a point where we couldn't even play anywhere. And that, that, oh, that was what hurt us for a few. Yeah, we were banned from, from anywhere we were going to play. If our name was on the flyer, oh, we weren't being able to play. Nope. Oh, man. Yeah, starting to become an infamous <laughs> in that that infamous yeah. uh, uh, reputation. You know, it, it feels great, and 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 uh, as a as an audience member, I like to go check out those kind of bands because it's it it has that kind of dangerous kind of element in the air, and yeah. uh, you know, it's it. I love going to the local shows, uh, going to the bigger shows, but the local ones, it, it's always unpredictable. Um, but it's always fun because that's where you get to hang out with all your bros. That's that's a uh, guy's night, you know. You, you get to jam out to whether you're locals that are opening up for uh, bigger bands that are that are playing, but just you know, when you're hanging out in places like Boozers, places like Zeros, yeah. uh, that have really made a home for all of our underground bands and, and up and coming bands that are getting started. Um, there's nothing better than that, man. Just getting together with your bros and, and hanging out and getting ready to jam and afterwards sharing the stage and with, with other friends that, that have started their own bands and stuff. Yep. And uh, is there another instrument you play or is vocals basically what well, do you feel strongest uh, about? Vocals I do, uh, but as far as I can play guitar and bass, uh, for many years I did uh, – write the most of the music as far as for drastic actions was guitar and lyrics so i would get i would get yeah, the right. structure of of the rhythm start getting the lyrics and like hey guys so this is what let's work let's start working with this because i'm i'm very yeah. difficult uh with uh with the music if i don't feel it there ain't no lyrics coming out of this not uh like all right let's let's yeah. move to another one like if they're working <laughs> with me you know. I get it, man. I, it sounds kind of like uh, what I like to do when I'm coming up with with the uh, with the song is I like the music to I like to help the arranging, the producing, the music, and, and along that kind of just ad lib and kind of put my two cents in. But then when the music's ready, then I feel like I can really put the icing on the cake. Is that your approach to it as well? Yeah, uh, uh, right. for a long like I said, a long time I've been I was writing it, and then I was like, hey man, y'all got to start stepping up the game and. They put, you know, put it together and I was like, okay, 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 all right. Okay, well, what about putting yeah. this here? The guitar goes here. And I was all right. Now it's my turn to come in with the lyrics. But that, that's yeah. the way it usually goes. Because sometimes they want me to write lyrics to the music and I'm all, I don't, I don't work like that. I got to hear the music first. I, if I don't feel it, yeah. I, can't get it. I can't get it. So that's, I dig it. I know, I know where you're coming from. Um, yeah. get into finding their mojo, but you got to feel it in the song. And when the song's really kicking ass, then it really makes it easy to put those lyrics to it. 
Yeah, sure uh, does. Yeah. You know, it just each one of us has our, our own ways of uh, putting the writing together. And uh, every band's different in their own ways. And, you know, the, depending on who the songwriter is and stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, thinking about you jo- getting on the microphone, what singer or, or maybe band got you influenced to uh, get on the mic and, and, and start being a vocalist? A vocalist? Man. I couldn't. Mm, that's a tough one to say because you know, I would have to say maybe some uh, local acts because that was more live mm. in your more live in your face than you know yeah being being at anything. So I would say maybe uh, seeing uh, Rob Chapa back in the day when he was in uh, Festus in Community yeah. Crisis. Uh, who else? Gerald um, from uh, Crayons and uh, Peter, yeah. Pete Suarez from Crayons. Is, yeah. uh, on, on my on me on my end, I was more into the local hardcore punk rock than than the metal. But I did sure. grow up with on uh, the starting of it as far as uh, my family. My on my dad's side, my uncles were all musicians. So Great. that's how that that's how I actually got into music was my 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 uncles. So Ooh, okay. So yeah. music was always around in the family, and so it kind of just uh you got the bug yeah. and uh next thing Ooh. you know. Yeah, well, it right. sure was. Yeah, it goes down to my grandfather, he just passed away. Uh and uh he had a drum set and it went from Uncle to uncle to uncle to the closest uncles I got, which are, I want to say, 56, 55, 51. So they're just a little bit older than I was. So all everything that, that came to Corpus to the Coliseum, I was like, hey, man, you need to check this out. Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, yeah. like all those. They would go check out the concerts and come back with a three-quarter baseball sleeves. The the yeah. shirts, the jerseys. Yes. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, those are the days, dude. Memorial Coliseum, man. Uh, yeah. Shit. You know, uh, thinking about that, uh, I was I had a question that was going to come up a little bit later, but since we're on the m- topic of Memorial Coliseum, who was your first concert? My first concert, I like I said, I really didn't go see concerts. My first concert, I want to say, I was already a late bloomer. Uh, concert, concert that I would say would have to be, I think it was Ozzy at Johnny Land. Oh, shit. Okay. Wow, but, all but right. Be- before yeah. that, I was going to Zeros uh, in 89. So it all started 89, was all underground. It was all local. That's all yeah. I went to. There was no, I never made it to any concerts till. I want to say, what was that, like, 95, 96? It was Aussie, like Aussie and Typo Negative. But other, yeah. other than that, I, I was just a frequent audience member in your local scene. That's all I was. And that's all yeah. That's all I supported was the local, uh, you know, the everything that was out there. Right. Yeah. Luckily, we had we had a pretty good scene going on going on around there. So there is, you know, usually shows every weekend, if not, you know, every other weekend. Yeah. Um, with the bands that you just started mentioning, you know, uh, uh, Rob Community Crisis, you know, yeah. that reminds me of of the little uh, spot right there off of Norton. Uh, EJ's. EJ's Pizza. Yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, man. Uh, Festus, what a fucking badass band. I remember seeing Festus over at uh, EJ's Backdrafts back in the day. Backdrafts, yeah. Yeah, man. So I'm thinking, godly, 89 and 90. Those are some great shows that we used to go to over here. And yeah. uh, we just... Uh, let me see. Um, thinking about more shows. How about the warehouse? Did you catch any shows at the warehouse? Like maybe Crump Suckers or Cryptic no, Slaughter? No, I, I was outside at the at the Crump Suckers. Uh, Cryptic Slaughter, oh, yeah. I guess. I missed that one. Like everybody right. would hang out across the street and stuff. But yeah, right. <laughs> that, that was, the, that was yeah. the one that I missed. What I really wanted to see was, it, was uh, uh, Cryptic Slaughter. Didn't make that one. 
That was a cool one. Yeah. I remember Crumb Suckers, man. We there was a hell of a party going on the outside. Yeah, we yeah. had decomposed and annihilator opening up for those guys. So we had, you know, a, a couple of our hometown favorites, you know, kicking ass. And Crumb Suckers is still one of my favorite all time bands. So uh um Dave Mescal moving on from pro moving on from bass on the Crumb Suckers to propane, it just kept me a fan yeah. for life. So yeah, Shout didn't you just play that, uh, what was it, yesterday or the day before? You yeah, had it? man. Yeah. I started going down the rabbit hole, and I came across <laughs> that propane video, and I was like, shit, man. And, and in the back, you know, I forgot about Dave from Il Nino, uh, drummer yeah, from Il Nino. Drummer. Well, used to used to jam with propane for years. And I was like, wow, man, look at Dave tearing it up, loving it. And and uh, just, you know, I, I, I kind of wanted to relish in that moment for a little bit because uh, my best friend Baldy had passed away last year. And that was one of the bands that, that me and Baldy really had in common. And and whenever the new propane would come out, he'd always, you know, send me a text, hey, the new one's out. Come by the house, I'll burn you a copy. And yeah. uh, we always were, were big fans of propane. And we got to hang out with them one night in San Antonio on that tour. And I want to say it was at the Scout Bar. And Dave Mescal and, and the guys, I didn't know who Dave was at the time. Um, but before that, I had played with him when he had El Nino going on for a little while. And right. uh, yeah, it just... Uh, Great times, great times and great memories. So I, that's why I was posting that up, man, because I was just kind of thinking about my brother and missing him. And, and uh, you know, music always ties us all together. You yeah, know, it does. You and, and, and you and Mike making it a family business and, and making drastic actions, you know, the, the powerhouse local fucking hardcore punk band, you know, that's stood strong throughout the past going on, like you said, 96. Holy shit. Yeah. 96 years. 26 years. 26. You've been doing the band longer than then you were doing anything else, right? Yeah, half of my life. <laughs> yeah, more than half of my life, man. You know, yeah. we're lifers, man. We're lifers. This is this is what we do. Our day job provides for for our nighttime, you know, a uh, love of music. And uh, you you know, we don't do it because we're getting there's no money in it, especially here in town. Um, yeah, it's because we love the jam. We love the feeling that that it, that it makes us feel um, getting together with our brothers and, and putting some good music and and having our friends go out there, you know, showing some gratitude for, you know, us putting 110 percent. That's the payoff, really. That's the payoff. Yep. And, and uh, luckily, we've got some great, you know, great promoters and supporters, you know, like like Casey, uh, like uh, like Tommy Sedna that always, you know gives it gives guys like you and i you know a holler whenever a band comes into town like hey man got you set up and you know really yep. mike makes things makes things work as well you know him and uh stay true streetwear you know putting, yeah. you know gigs together um and getting a great setup for you guys to to you know you know share a, a share a show together with one of these national acts is yeah. um uh, awesome man and i'm glad that mike takes puts forth the effort and, and, and gets that going yeah. man, because you know somebody's really got to put you know put their foot forward and uh you know also got to make a shout out to patrick patrick from destroyed productions um making it happen man you know there's a lot of times where where pat has brought bands down and the our scene hasn't hasn't shown up and made it even a show for him to break even and uh that's a hard thing to swallow man when you're a promoter when you don't break even, everybody still gets taken care of. And then you're thinking about the gamble in the next show. But yep. Patrick just got balls of steel, man. And he's he keeps bringing them down. And and God bless him and, and um, Destroyed Productions for, for putting on some badass fucking shows for us. Um, yeah, we, going we did down, it for years. We did. Yeah. You know, going down the rabbit uh, hole, I was looking well, at some old videos that you had posted on YouTube. And I think... One yeah. of the videos that I, that I caught that you probably had like maybe three or four sh different videos from was from a Gators, and it must have been a show that uh that Patrick probably set up over there. Do you remember what that that show was that you've got uh, if it, several? If videos it was from? at Gators, it was a uh, different. Uh, it might have been a HR show from Bad Brains. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, that's right. That was, that was a real good show. That was a dope show. And, yeah, man. And, you guys uh, had the crowd by the balls in that one. Yeah. Uh, it was HR, I believe, Louis Saito, Louis from uh, from Suicidal. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I think it was they were on that bill. And he actually played bass with uh, HR that night also. So. Oh, tight. You know, yeah. I, that was a hell of a show. And you guys, in my opinion, were the highlight. I loved HR and that's who I, that's, you know, I wanted to go check out some bad brains and stuff, but you know, you know, you know, it was, it was a rough night for HR. 
you know yeah. it's it's not it's not easy for us as we get older man and uh <laughs> but <laughs> but you know he went up there did he he knocked it out the band yeah, kicked did. ass the band fucking kicked ass but i was really I, the best part about it was seeing how you guys put on a kick ass show and the crowd just eating it up great circle pit going on i love mike get mike getting down on stage man he's a, he's 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 got it down man as a bass player yeah. um he's fucking tight he's tight man i love his backup vocals you know uh it's a great mix man it's a great mix so tell me about the other members like for instance the i was i was checking out the down for life video mm-hmm. um who are the other members it looks like uh um danny is on drums is that right uh for the new song it was actually our cousin adan uh he's oh, on okay. drums we have a uh, rudy that's on guitar and then frank uh, pancho that's on on a uh, rhythm guitar or lead guitar also they switch back and forth but that that's the, right. the the new lineup oh we, like you said through the years we go through so many uh member changes it's just it's hard yeah. You know, some people move on, some like your family gets in the way, but that that right there is the the last lineup. Is, uh, yeah, you know one of the struggles too, like you mentioned about having lineup changes, is going through teaching the new guy all the songs from before, and oh. you know after after lineup <laughs> change after lineup change, dude, that's one of the things that that uh, t- takes its toll on the band members that have been there, the founding members that yeah, have, yeah, like, it here does. we go again. You know, and uh, but that just goes to the territory, yeah. you know. Uh, and uh, when you want to keep grinding, that just uh, what you and, gotta and do. It, it's it sucks because it's like, all right, we got new songs, and then we got to get somebody new, and we have yeah. a show coming up. So all they do is learn the old songs, and by the time we get to the new ones, we have somebody else. So it's like we're never <laughs> getting to the fucking new ones. It's like, ah, uh, come on, man, <laughs> we're gonna get it. But, yeah, yeah i know what you mean hey <laughs> you're gonna catch up to it i know i know how it goes yeah. and it, it's just perseverance it's just perseverance and it, oh, yeah. and it always ends up working out but yeah those are those those, those are the ups and downs man of of, of having a uh, a band with that kind of longevity longevity you know uh over two decades worth man that's amazing that's amazing. yeah and you we know, still I, ain't I called did. to quit so we're taking a break no way right, right? Ain't no yeah, clue. you know, sometimes, you know, whether it's, you know, it's, you know, kids, family, a break's a break, you know, but but the yeah. thing is, you know, like I told my guys in, in the different bands that I've been in, it's like, you know what, if you don't want to make it a practice, I'd rather you just tell me, hey, I just don't want to jam the night, man. Instead of, you know, you ain't got to lie, it ain't, it ain't about that. We're all big boys. If you don't want to jam, it's cool. Um, but make it next week, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, if if there's something going on, hey, let us know. If you need a month off because you know your schedule is changing at work, it's all good. We're gonna work with you. But um, you just it's that kind of flexibility and, and respect that we just have for each other that in, in, in our bands that that uh, that provides for that long life like that, man. So thinking about drastic action sound, and I was been I've been drilling it over the past you know forty eight hours really, and what kind of bands would you give credit to that maybe influence a drastic action sound? Wow. That, that's a good question. Cause it's all over the place. It's like the roots are all hardcore the, punk right there. Oh yeah. But, the, the early eighties, mm-hmm. hardcore punk. Uh, yeah. The big influence is a lot of, uh, 80, UK, uh, 82, like GBH exploited. Ooh. Yes. Crossing over to you know uh, agnostic front to sh- you name it, uh, we listen to it all. Bad religion, you know. Yeah. West Coast, uh, circle jerks. I listened to it all growing. It was skateboarding, so like I said. Yeah. And back in the day, you know, along with metal, you see, you know, uh, murder in the front row. It was all. Uh, tape trading and compilations you didn't have one band you had 20 bands but they were all 20 different bands so you had to learn you know hey well who the fuck is this like whoa whoa." that that's how i got it uh yeah that's how a lot of influences came about there's different different styles 
So uh, MOD, SOD cool. was a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool, man. You know, and and yeah. you're right. We're in, in in those early early years of ours in our teenage years when we're starting to really get into a, a love for for hardcore. Uh, hardcore punk, New York style hardcore and stuff like that. We're just kind of really hungry for as much material that we can get our hands on from any band that's coming out of New York or that's, you know, bringing it like we like, you know, like we love to hear. And well, the genre just kept exploding. They, you know, more bands kept popping up and it's hard to keep up with them all. But we just wanted more. We were hungry for all that. And yeah, I know exactly what you mean. It's it, you, you start jamming for something. Um, you're jamming to that that uh i'm trying oh my god cause for alarm and yeah. before you know it you know that's just jamming with with your bros and next thing you know you start putting in some some different kind of melodies in your in your songwriting and stuff like that because you know you start these little things start start uh attaching themselves to your own style and you know yeah. you dig what the agnostic front's doing so it's like hey let's let's try a little bit of this you know let's let's bring this part in kind of like what they do in crucified for instance yeah you know uh let's slow things down like a nice little mosh pit part but uh let's pick it back up you know let's finish strong you know with a nice hardcore punk beat you know all that kind of collaboration and stuff just is really kind of what brought us together and um you know all, i know exactly what you mean by all those early influences kind of playing a role that's that's yep. that's powerful, man. You guys have uh, you've taken the best of all your favorites and and made it into something unique, and that's what makes drastic acting yeah. special. And and, that, and and we've been told before, like we go play, and it's like, dude, okay, so you can play with this punk band, and then yeah. next week you can get booked with this harder punk band, and then you can go play with this. Oi band and you can play with this hardcore <laughs> band yeah and it's like you you got so many mixes that you can go with and it's like we weren't trying to do anything but what we like to do now if you like it or not that's fine with us we didn't care because when and it's like paying your dues like you said we've been together for so long it's we'd play local shows to two three four five our friends we go out of town, we had a gang reputation. You go and play to the bands at least like three or four times. And then, you yeah. know, you start building an audience outside your city. It, it, right. Some people think it's it's handed to you. And, oh, man, you're going out of town, this and that. Yeah, we're going out of town. But, fuck, sometimes you're just, you play to nobody but just the fucking bands that are there, that are booked, that didn't even draw a crowd to begin with also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, it's like starting from scratch, you know, like, yep. like in your hometown, you're starting from scratch when you're doing that first show in San Antonio and Houston and you you build it up. And if you're lucky, you got a couple of bands that are locals over there that that put you in a good spot. So that way you're yep. going to be able to be seen by the most people that are going to be there at the show. And a lot of that is back scratching, you know, and you tell those bands, hey, you know what? I take you find somebody you like. They hooked you up. Hey, come on down to Corpus and we'll, you start trading shows. Yep. And you know, one thing just leads to another, but yeah, it's 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 um, it ain't it's all it's cracked up to be when you're going out of town because yeah. you got expenses, you got a cover, you you know, got a place to stay. If you're going the further you go, you got to put you know stay overnight, and uh, yeah. you got to eat, you know. And sometimes it just ends up being uh, more of an expense than anything else. But as you well, and I it was already know, cheaper it's, back it's, then. Yeah, it was definitely a lot cheaper, man. You know, uh, but. You know, it, it's it's worth it to us. To us, it's a treat. It's like, yeah, we're going to go play out of town. Hell yeah. Yep. Oh, we're all pitching in for we're going to rent a van or whatever. Whatever the, gear, whatever the gear, the plan is to get all of our gear up to San Antonio or down to the valley. You know, it's just a, uh, every band goes through that and it's it's never easy. And you always, it's always almost like a, a different version of National Lampoon's vacation because there's always some kind of <laughs> shit that happens. You know, something's going to break down or, oh, yeah. you know, the, the, it's it's always interesting each trip. So, oh, uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's life has been, life is too short. I'm glad that, that both of our bands have been able to get out and, and, and enjoy it. But because it's not, because it's definitely, hopefully a long way off before we end up seeing, uh, you know, Lord Almighty, We've got a lot of good shows, hopefully, under our belt still, not only locally, but out of town, too, man. Oh, I yeah. Think, you know, your market is something that fits into a, 
just about everything, man, because it's just a great, solid, fucking high, high paced, energetic rock band, man. You yeah. know, um, it, it's not like back in the day where, you know, I think just punk rock has, has evolved and it's, it's, it's more appreciated right now. Um, there's always punk bands that, that sound a certain way when they're getting started. And then there's bands that have been around 10 years that are doing what they do and just do it to the T. And those are the best of the best. You guys are like that. You guys are in that mix where nobody does it any better than you. And it's, you guys are masters of your, of your own genre right there. So thinking about like that first release you guys put out and that was, um, well, let me take it back a little bit. In 2019, the self-titled EP, uh, went fucking hard. And I like it from the first track, uh, pent up rage, um, to the last track, which was a uh, rock and roll weekend. It yeah. fucking bangs, man. And I like it because it's that kind of it's that kind of a jam that song to song, it gets him fired up, wants me kind of drink and gets me a little juiced up and kind of get you want to go look for trouble, man. You know, it's 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 got that good fucking we're, let's go for a cruise, man. Let's go to check it out of the show. And you yeah. know, God forbid, God forbid you get running into any, any hostility and uh shit happens after that but you know what it just it gets you fired up man and that's what i love about it. it's it's speed it's hyper um i love the, the sing-alongs and everything that you got going on right there and um when speaking to the studio is that something that that you enjoy doing do you like being in the studio and, and laying down tracks or is, do you find if or do you find it you know can be a bitch <laughs> no i enjoy it because uh it's just putting out music that's what i want to do it and you know the, yeah. it has its ups and downs but now we sure. go in there and we 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 try to get it as professional as you can and knock it in uh, knock it out as fast as we can and then go in there and try to mix it and say hey well this goes here and, this. and that's just uh you know learning through the years uh recording because yeah. Man, we uh, the first times we hey we're gonna record yeah we got seventy bucks we're recording in the living room I was singing in a fucking closet you know yeah fucking, <laughs> and it's like all right yeah it sounds badass and then you're like well we could have did this and this and so right. like you said it, it, uh, yeah. through the years you progress it, and learn from your mistakes and you try to make it better stuff like that. But the the most disappointing one was uh, good friend Lito, rest in peace, Lito Davila. I don't know if you ever ran into him or met him. Uh, he ran, uh, his family has a Radio Jalapeno KCCT. Yeah. And uh, he got a studio time at, at Hacienda Records. Yeah. So we, we went in there and we're all, like badass we're at a badass, badass. recording studio so we went yeah. in there like you like you see um uh richie and la bamba uh, so everybody's <laughs> playing together you go in you do one track if somebody messes up start all over again i think we knocked out about i think we knocked out about maybe 10 songs and yeah. like, all right so you know we all left and then they hand over the tape. And I don't know if it's because it was punk rock, but man, it was the suckiest fucking recording we ever put. It was a like like it yeah. was a real real. It was a it was professional, but they they didn't they didn't they didn't treat us right. But what can you say? It was oh, for free. Okay. Thanks, yeah, Lido. There you go, man. I think I know Lido. Um... He he was always at the shows with you guys. No, he was he was an older well he he was older than me a few years. Okay. Uh, he hung around with uh with uh Ali Sharp and them. Really, I think I do know. Uh, yeah, because I remember when he when yeah he he he, he, he was he was at uh like I said he was he was older than me so I want to say he might be around going on fifty now. Uh, like he was what. Yeah, so rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. He 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 went on to do uh the buzz. Remember the buzz? Oh, the buzz. Okay. Yeah, he, the, the the magazine the radio. local, right? 
No, the, yeah. the oh, radio, shit. the buzz. And then in the early 90s on AM at midnight, he would do Lito's Dirty Laundry Show. And it would be like from midnight to maybe one or two. And he did a whole bunch of punk rock music and stuff like that where he interviewed, I Man. believe, the wrong crowd and Festus and... Uh, yeah. some other some other stuff so but, damn yeah. man a pioneer thank you Lito hell yeah. yes thank goodness you know and so thinking about that tell me about what is going on now with your new project Ill Adjusted how did that come together Who? how did that get formed that got formed with me and Alex Dominguez from Devastation and Annihilator. Yes. Uh, we always said, hey, you know what? Let's do something. Let's do something. Let's do something. And then it was finally one of those ones where <laughs> he hit me up and said, well, let's do this. I was like, All right, well, let's do this. And, yeah. uh, you know, we went through a, let's see, I think a couple of lineup changes before where we're at right now, where we can say we're actually ill-adjusted. Because with this, right. this is where we came up with a name. So we didn't have a name when we had first gotten together. But once we got okay. the, the, the all these members, that's when uh, actually ill-adjusted's name was put put to the band. So, yeah. But yeah, it was something we had just talked about for years, for years. And it's like, Hey, well, let's do something. I was like, all right. But yeah, that was something where we wanted to do thrash, hardcore, and punk rock mixed together. So, and it's coming along. Yeah. It's like something different. Like, so get ready. Get it, ready. A lot of, yeah, because a all lot right. of them are, uh, you know, you got uh, Eric with a uh, throat locust and then my friend Edward with a uh, warm rot. And they're, you know, representing the, I guess, what would you call the Texas death metal uh, yeah. down here in Corpus Christi. So sure, we're going to yeah. be representing uh, uh, another genre now. So it'll be coming out yeah. pretty damn good. I like the way everything's coming out. Who are the other band members in there besides you and Alex? Uh, Alex, it's me, Alex, and then uh, Hector Juarez, which uh, right. he's with, uh, with uh, has been in bands as far as uh, let's see, Abrasion, Periwinkle Massacre, yeah. what is it, uh, Serpents, Serpents and Saviors, and saviors. Yes. yeah, and then Matt Wood, and then Matt Wood, Matt Wood. Uh, all right. He's been around for a while too. He was uh in I believe in Serpents and Saviors and yeah. Labeling Theory, punk band back in the day called Degenerates. And then he was actually with me yeah. in uh other hardcore project that lasted for a few years was called No Questions Asked. That were we okay. had played for a couple of years where we yeah. played with I'm uh Dead Horse. We played with some pretty, show. yeah, with Dead Horse, M.O.D., uh, yeah. Emir. Actually, Kick I don't know how we pulled it, but Casey hit us up and we were able to jump on the bill. You know, how could a hardcore band play with Morbid Angel? We played with Morbid Angel, so we were like, what? <laughs> All yeah, right. Dude. Knock, knock that <laughs> one off the list. You know, growing Hell up yeah. in, in, in the late '80s, early '90s, you would see, you know, Morbid Angel, Morbid Angel. Oh, like, all right, knock that <laughs> one. Yeah. Right. Hell yeah. That's pretty, well, that's a, you know, Casey loves you guys, man, and he knows you. Yeah. You guys bringing a, bringing a crowd, and uh, you're professional. So it doesn't matter who you he he pairs you up with. He knows that you guys can take care of business. And yeah. if it's Morbid Angel, hey, you can take that one off the off the off the list already. Done. Who's next? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we're, we're shooting for with this band. Is uh, you know, I I've done. Growing up, like you said, you, you're able to to listen to some of the, uh, you know, I, I don't know how you explain it, 
people you grew up listening to and maybe I guess idolize, you know what I mean? Say like you, sure. like I said, uh, Agnostic Front grew up listening to him. Now Roger, you know, he's a good buddy that I call. He's a brother, you know. Vinny Stigma is my uncle Vinny. Yeah. Um, being able to play with them. Yeah. In drastic actions, uh, exploited, sick of it all, Murphy's Law. Like now with this, we'll see where we can take it with a uh, more of a uh, the metal, and see sure. where we can we can do with this and run with it. So, yeah, uh, that's uh, huge, when we man. when we heard that Milwaukee I'm... Metal Fest, we're all, uh, are you ready? <laughs> are you ready? I was like, who the fuck yeah. do we need to contact so we can get this going? <laughs> right, but right. Maybe maybe Shit. next year we'll be a we'll be have everything the like a, that like, would be so fucking badass, man. Get on that that new uh Milwaukee Metal Fest. Jamie Josta brought it back. And yeah. uh, you know that was a that was a mainstay back in the day, back in the early nineties, late eighties. And uh Alex, you know, like we just yep. were talking about Alex Dominguez, man, Annihilator and Devastation, Sufferance. You know, I think Alex has probably been to about at least four or five of those and 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 played them. And uh I'd always I'd always crack up whenever uh, a story would come up, uh either from him or Dillo talking about the van trip from here to uh go do the show. <laughs> Cause that's a that's a hell of a ride, man. You know, but yep. that just goes to show the determination, man, and uh, the will that these guys had at an early age to to say, "Fuck it, man, we're going to Milwaukee Metal Fest. We're on it. We're going." And uh, yep. That, what a what a what a what a great ride it's been for Alex. You know, he's 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 seen us so much, dude. And uh, you know, but he's such a grounded and very humble guy man one of the best guys that i've known throughout the years of my career and been able to you know jam with him for nearly uh, you know 10 years in in Kilimora. and uh hey, alex is just good people and you know I, i'm glad that you guys got together because you know, you know it's like you know we, we meet friends all the time and, and boozers that are that are uh, uh other musicians and you know we, we would like to jam with them man so that you, i understand how it's like hey um let's do something and then eventually, yeah. when the time is right, boom, all the stars align. And now here we are. How long has it been since uh, Ill Adjusted was in, in the making? Has it been a year already or maybe just six, nine months? Uh, I want to say with a full band lineup right now, I believe it was, uh, it'll be going on a year in April. Uh, okay. As far as the, this lineup going. Yeah. That's. And thinking about that. Do you have a maybe a, uh, a demo or an EP that's that was some material getting ready to come out? Yeah, uh, we're shooting hopefully uh, sometime after April <clears throat> because this okay. little thing with me set back to going into practice. Like, <clears throat> yeah, doctor's orders is light pressure on my foot, so to get out of the house, it's all. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm stuck here, bro. Uh, I'm going crazy. Get you, man. Yeah, man. But hey, go through the process. Let it heal. Um, I'm speaking for myself. I I pulled my hamstring on New Year's Eve, and yeah. that first week, man, oh, it was murder. I couldn't even sit on the freaking toilet, man. Everything freaking hurt, and uh, just super restless. But you know, as Mother Nature would have it. And as, as soon as it's time for me to go back to work, because I had a little brief layoff right there since I work at the university. Yeah. As soon as it was ready time to, for me to go back to work, that gave my leg two weeks to heal. And I was just up enough to go back and start making money again. And it's a good thing, man, because, you know, we get restless. We get so yep. fucking restless. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially when we're not able to make it a practice. And uh, I'm so stubborn that... that after pulling my hamstring the fourth night, I was really telling Lori, yeah, I got practice with Headbangers Pit. Well, how are you going to do it? I said, I'll just, I'll figure it out. I'm going to take like four or five ibuprofens and just, I'll work it out. You know, even I got to sit down. And, yeah. Um, you know, it hurt like a bitch afterwards. It, and at the, you know, in hindsight, I probably, I, I should have just chilled out. But, uh, you know, I'm stubborn. And so I don't follow my example. Listen to your wife. Let her take care of you. You know what I mean? Let her spoil you for a little while. And before you know it, you're going to be back in the grind and you'll be like, damn, man, I'm, I sure don't miss those days. Those days yeah. where I couldn't get up and just fucking do everything I, I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. But that time's coming. 
You just keep doing the right thing. You're going to be right back where you need to be. So getting to the next question, uh -huh. you know, how is it, how does it feel being a taco kingpin at the best taco restaurant here in town? <laughs> That was, that was, that was self-titled. I gave that one to myself. I I'll love run. it though, man. I'll, I'll yes, run with man. It. Yeah. That's pride, dude. Yeah. That's pride. You know, and it's something that's earned. Uh, your family business with you and my getting out there and grinding it every day, you know, taking Sundays off. God bless you for taking Sundays off, man. Because if you didn't, you'd be grinding seven days a week. We'd be keeping uh, you busy. We and, did it. You know, yeah, dude. And, you know, I buy extra tacos on Saturday so that way I can have my serving on, on Sunday and uh, because I can't get it on Sunday. But I moved yeah. from where I used to live probably about six months ago. So you don't see me quite as often because, you know, I'm lazy, man. I'm just fucking lazy. And but last weekend I got up. I had a lot of energy. I told yeah. my wife, hey, I'm going to go to Chacho's. She goes, OK, go check it out. And so, yeah, I went to go get, man, I loaded up on some tacos, man. I was like, yeah. And Esther was telling me about you and, and, and yeah. you're recovering. And, and that's what I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to hit up our new phone. This is the perfect time. He's He's got some downtime right now. So now's the time to get him on, on the show and start awesome. talking about drastic yeah. action and, and getting the word out to everybody here in town about ill adjusted. You know, it's yeah. been a year in the works and you know, things can kind of happen real quick. Just like, just like they have for, for, for uh, Eric and the guys in throat locus, you know, uh, yeah. they're popping up all over the place, but they're grinding, they're jumping on every fucking show they can get on and uh, more power to them, man. And I see that kind of same kind of mojo and, and, and fire that, that can possibly hit, whenever you guys start gigging that it's just going to go from one thing to the next yeah. and uh, being in your best health and being, being ready to hit the stage like that is essential. And so God willing, you know, between now and April, the recording gets knocked out, maybe yep. hit a gig or two in between there. Is there a, maybe a show possibly that, that you guys are, are hoping to, hoping to do, you know, up until April or anything in the works so far? Mm. We've been we've been asked, but uh, you know this is everybody's little side project. So right now, okay. uh, Matt's kind of busy with uh, Hector with um, that knife party tribute yeah, going, definitely. and uh, yeah, I can't even pronounce that other band he's in. Hector Conscientious, Conscientious. is it? Yeah, that one. They're they're, they're gigging playing. Too, all right. Yeah, they're gigging too. So it's not a rush. So when when we yeah. hit, we're going to hit. You know what I mean? We're not going to put yeah. something out that that's and that's just that's what I, that's the way I looked at it. I was like, okay, we got to hey, we forgot Joshua, dude. Joshua yeah. on drums. Yeah. Oh we, shit. We, okay. We skipped him, dude. We skipped him. Joshua is on oh, drums. Shit. Okay. Yeah. Hey, man. And what yeah. what band did Josh play with before? Uh he. Man, I know right now he's in uh, Corpus Creepies, and he's actually a busy. He's actually a busy man too. He has another metal band that I can't. I can't tell you. The is name. it Botan? I don't know. Maybe. But I know one thing. Something I know Josh fire. Did. Oh, really? Something okay. fire, maybe something. I'm not too sure. Josh yeah. is a great drummer, man. Yeah, he's yeah, he tight. Is. He's tight, man. That's a you know, it, it's 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 a super group that you guys got going on, man. Because like you said, it's your side project for for that's what I was gonna say. All y'all's main project, you know, and, and and eventually, like you said, when when the time's right, boom, yeah, get ready, get ready, yeah. man. I'm excited. I'm excited, man, because I I know that band just got a lot of heavy hitters, mm -hmm. so. Um, when it comes to presence on stage, energy, the music, I know it's going to be there, man. We should bring it. We should yes, bring sir. it, and I'm ready. <laughs> well, I also want to want to mention, you know, um, I did a couple of couple of charity events, you know, last year, and I, and I do my Christmas show, but I love the fact that you and Chacho's Tacos provides the uh, the tamales for the Christmas Eve free dinner over at the House of Rock. That is yep. awesome, man. That is kicking ass. And how many years have you guys been doing that already? Jeez, to tell you the truth, I really couldn't. You have to ask Casey about that because he's a, okay. He's a. I want to say maybe keep, like. Yeah, I was gonna say like maybe 14, 15, 16 years even. Yeah, man. Yeah, he's the one that keeps track. It's like. Uh, yeah. 
there's other people out there that that keep it together like that with all same thing with a sure. with like me flyers recordings t-shirts any anything memorable i don't have yeah. it you can ask me Damn for something it. i'm all no nope, i don't got it oh, i wish i did have it now i wish i still had a right. memory too <laughs> yeah but, right yeah. Yeah, until yeah. tell me about uh, it dude. Uh, I know along I... along with that as far as the tamales too um you know whoever's checking it out uh promoters they they know already chachas tacos any any touring band that that's from out of town we always yeah. welcome them to chachos tacos you know no matter what and you know yeah. most of the time it's, it's on the house because you know we've hit the road and we know what it is to be out of town on the road yeah. waking up and going to the next city and the night before you had one fucking dollar burger you know what i mean that from the payout that you got so you yeah, know before man. they before you take off you got a good hot meal you know take take it have that a good awesome, full, full stomach before you hit the next town you know, so anybody you know, they're all welcome that is badass man and, and and i didn't know that for sure but i've seen so many bands touring bands that have posted pictures the the day after the show them making a stop over at chachos and taking a picture yep. right there right 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 in front of the place and i love that dude i love that and i love that that uh you guys take care and and, and respect and and have an appreciation for these touring bands and uh yeah you couldn't have said it better man the, um there's not a lot of money to do uh, to do what we, you know, on the road. And there's a lot of expenses that need to be taken care of. So, man, a free breakfast? Dude, you're coming off like a champ, dude, big time. And and, yep. and what a cool way to also meet some of these great bands that are coming into town. And, you know, just networking and, you know, they're pushing chachos. And next time they come to town, you know, God willing, you know, you can hook up with, with uh, either Ill Adjusted or Drastic Actions with one of these bands. And, uh, yep. It's super cool when I go on, on Facebook, dude, and I see Roger Merritt wearing a Chacha's Taco shirt, dude. I'm like, yeah, yeah that's the shit, dude. Super yeah. cool, man. And that just kind of gives credit to such a badass that Roger is. Um, yep. Humble. He's a, he's a guy to talk to. And uh, Yes, very down to earth. Very down to earth, man. And, uh, uh, you know, I had the pleasure of, of, of chit-chatting with him last time he was in town uh, at the Sick of It All show. Um, right. I waited afterwards, uh, and me and my friend Roland took some pictures with Sick of It All and Roger and Vinny, uh, of, of Agnostic Front and super cool guys. And, and they're always down to meet and sign autographs and take pictures with, with any fan, man. They're, they're, they're super guys like that. And, uh, you know, if you right. want, if, if anybody out there wants to meet them, just hang out after the show. Eventually they're going to leave the house of rock or whatever venue they're at to go to their bus. And they're super approachable. So uh, th those kind of, you know, I remember doing that shit like when uh, Metallica came to town and I got to meet uh, James Hetfield and Kurt Hammett uh, waiting at, at the uh, back entrance to the Memorial Coliseum. You know, yeah. uh, being being a fan of music, there's nothing else I wanted to do, man. Shit, I'm I'm going to stay until the bus fucking drives away if I can, you know, but uh, uh, it's, you know, I, I couldn't I couldn't say it any better, but just uh, loving music you do whatever it takes, you know, and me and you being lifers, God, yeah. you know, uh, you, you had a chance to already open for, for, for exploited, man. How was it meeting Wadi? How is that guy? If you can understand him. <laughs> ah, That's funny, man. <laughs> yeah, I've heard him man, nice. during a podcast and you're right. You're right. How funny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah man, it, was, it was cool. It was, he's yeah. real cool. He, but he's real like, like fast pace, like you have a oh, try to shit. have a conversation okay. with him and like, like oh, oh, and then he'll take off. You're all, oh, what? Hey, dude, what the hell did he just say? Uh, okay, yeah. but yeah, it was cool because we played with him. Um, we played the first time with him at Fitzgerald's in Houston, oh, and uh, cool. we're able to. Uh, they had the upstairs and downstairs, so they had two stages going. So uh, right before they played, we played wow. downstairs, and then they played upstairs. And then we were able to we go play with them in McAllen. 
We played with them in McAllen. Wow. Hell yeah. With, uh, I want to say, I think it was Final Con- It was Exploited, Final Conflict that were together at the time, that, yeah. uh, that tour. And uh-huh. then uh, we brought them here to Corpus. And it was, um, I believe, Exploited in Total Chaos. And we were able yeah. to play with them three times. So uh, all three times yeah, is man. fun. But then, yeah. like like you said, we'll we'll, we'll go back, and, and it takes a lot. You know, you got to give it to Casey and, and uh, Tommy Boy, Alex at Boosters, Patrick, because uh, yeah, Jesse Gomez, Jesse Sachs, Jesse you know, Sachs. He, he he started booking shows in the early '90s for his band, The Wrong Crowd, and then oh, yeah. uh, you know we all graduated, and me and him linked up, and we. I was helping him with the Rise Entertainment, I want to say from at least like 98 to about 2006, where, you know, you see the ups and downs, like you said, of taking a chance and promoting and doing it. But we also did it because we wanted to play with the bands that were on fucking tour too if if, who, yeah. if you're not bringing them to corpus you're not going to be able to play with them you know what i mean because right. they don't know you from out of town so that was another yeah. thing how how uh drastic actions was able to you know like you said network and it's all about yeah. network you hey you know hey you you do this show i got you over here so man we would go to Brownsville, McAllen, Austin, Houston, Dallas, and you know we all just networked yeah. the whole Texas, the the whole Texas circuit, and it was uh, always fun. You know, at the time, the um, I would call it, I guess, uh, the third wave of punk rock here in 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 uh, Texas hit. I want to yeah. say. And it was okay. going strong to where we can book shows and have like 500 kids, you know what I mean? Hell and that's yeah. just that, and that's just punk rock, not mixing it like you know in in the 90s where you you know we would have 500 kids, but you had a metal band, you have a punk band, you have a hardcore band. Okay. This was just yeah. straight. This was just straight up a punk rock scene because yeah. you know. You 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 were in some of the shows where they mixed it at, at like EJs right. or at zeros, and you have a punk band, sure. you have a metal band, you have a thrash band, and sometimes it just all those different genre heads it just didn't work out. <laughs> right. Somebody was somebody exactly. would get upset and get pushed wrong. But yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh but man, yeah, you know, and me- just go ahead. Yeah, and, and, and mentioning that, like you were talking about. You know, so is there anything you miss about the old Corpus Christi scene, you know, back there in the, the 89, 90, 91? It's just, I guess now is back then it was the crowds. The crowds are the crowds. awesome. You know what I yeah. mean? That's what you miss nowadays. Where are they at nowadays, Be, right? Because the, the kids are all uh, easy uh, accessibility to music. You know, sure. hey, this yeah. band, this band's coming. Let's go check them out, dude. Like, you know, I don't have anything to listen to them, but let's go do something. Like you said, it was something to do right. on the weekend, yeah. even a weekday, because down here you don't right. have a choice. I learned that, you know, promoting bands. Hey, why the fuck does Austin get a fucking Friday and Corpus gets a Monday? Oh, because right. you're a smaller market. Oh yeah, motherfucker, we'll prove to you that we're gonna fucking make it. So. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's the crowd. The crowd is what we, what I miss. Uh, you know, right. like you said, or I said, sometimes they did a mix, but shit, you would have a good two hundred, three hundred. Now, it's even hard to pull a hundred, and that's right. that. And and there's no youngsters. You know, yeah. it's hard. It it was just something I guess for us to do because we did run the streets. You know what I mean? Right. Hey, what are you yeah. doing? Oh, I'm going to be over here, uh, blah, 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 till a certain time. But yet I got to go home, but at least by like nine o'clock. All right. You know, as you get older, yeah. you stay out a little later. You know, by the right. time you're, you're in high school, you're already, you know, you're doing what you're doing. 
staying yeah. out, having fun, doing what you're not supposed to, you know. Right. Yeah. That, that, that's a that's the <laughs> thing that that's the thing that lacks these this um, this generation yeah. is 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 going out and being social and being able right. to go as, to a show and yep. Yeah. They're social media, but mean. they're not social uh, in front of you. You know what I mean? Not in public. Not in public. They're yeah. they're looking at their phones. Yeah. yeah. And back in the day, we were looking at each other. We're like, hey, so what's yeah. up? What are you going to do? And, you know, there, it was such a different time. And uh, I miss that about it. You know, I miss the uh, the camaraderie we, we had as far as, you know, sharing music. You know, it's nice having, you know, everything we need on our phone now. But there was something thrilling about getting that that a uh, second or third generation cassette of a new band that you hadn't heard that your friend was telling you, hey, these guys kick ass. And, yeah, you know, and, and then when they finally come to town, you know, opening up for another band, you're like, oh, shit, man, badass. And and, you know, they were always approachable as well, too. You know, I can't say I met a band that one guy was just an asshole. Um, but I, at the same time, I always got kind of gave them space. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and if and if if anything, I always wanted to let the bands that I, that I love that I got a chance to see, I just want to come up to them and say, "Hey, badass show!" Just real quick, maybe give them a pound, maybe maybe yeah. a, shake a hand, and that's about it. Because I know how it can be, and and everybody wants to get a little piece of the uh, of them, but uh, I still want to let them know that I thought they kicked ass, and yeah, you know, and and that makes a lot of difference, man. I, I love when when somebody that's never seen my band, you know, my original band, Existing Anger, which I have now comes up and, and said, hey, man, you guys are good, man. You know, I'm starting from scratch all over again with these guys. And uh, like anybody else in a, in, a, in a new band, you you got to keep earning it show after yeah. show. And uh, that's part of the grind. But like me and you know it so well, it's, uh, it's a challenge we, 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 we take on with open arms because this is, oh, yeah. this is our life as a profession. Yep. It's like, yeah, I'm going to go up there and eat it up. And... Uh, take no prisoners mm -hmm. and god willing god willing you know uh, th the shows are, are going to keep on coming down you know uh, thinking about some of the other shows that uh i was kind of coming across as i was listening to some of the, the music that was popping up after you guys would finish on spotify you know it'd, it'd kind of go off to another artist that is similar to your genre right um you guys had jammed with did y'all play with scarhead when they came down was that a show that, that, that mike that mike brought, brought down was that maybe a state true production? Mm, no, it was a uh, beatdown. Uh, brought him. Beatdown did that one. Okay, that's Alex, right? Yeah. yeah oh, Alex. Okay. Okay. Cool. He, he it. Hey, they're they're a badass band too. They stopped by Chacho's right there the next day, right? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Donnie, the tour manager, and uh, and the other guys showed up. They made it out there. I was trying to yeah. think who else was uh, who else was there. Joe Joe Fatal, hip hop was yeah. there, and Tony Slippers there. They made it out there. Yeah, very you know. tight. Very but like tight, like man. you like you said, as far as keeping it with your with your audience, also is yeah, is keeping it real. And I've always accepted the new generation. Because the new cool. generation is what it's going to keep it going. You know, you get right. some, some older heads that are like, oh, what do these young kids know? Whatever, blah, blah. And it'd be like, hey, dude, you're just drunk. I thought it just, you know, leave them alone. Like you were, you were that kid at their age. You know what at I mean? Their age. Now, That's right. Look, look, look at you now. They're coming right. in. They got to start somewhere. I know yeah. you didn't start off. You weren't born with a fucking Mohawk <laughs> motherfucker. I tell you, you know what I mean? Or, right. You know, like you got to accept the new generation. And that's what it, it, I accepted it. And with open arms, you know, the, yeah. the whole generation that, that went to drastic action shows, I still keep in contact with most of, most of them, you know, their, their family, their sisters yeah. and brothers, you know, I saw these kids when they were like 13, 14, 15, you know, yeah. going to our shows and now they're yeah. fucking 35, 36, 37, you know what I mean? And right, that, that's, just, that's just, <laughs> that's just, I'd never, and I'm still like to this day, if there's a new kid coming, like 
I say, hey, what's up? Or, you know, make them feel welcome yeah. because, you know, me Perfect. too, coming into the scene, I was one where I was by myself at the beginning. It's yeah. like you're intimidated, you know, you're like at the crowd, you have your mom go drop you off. And the other kids were there with their group of friends, you know what I mean? And yeah. it wasn't until I want to say like 90, 91, you know, I started hanging out with the kids at school uh, because from I lived in Martin District and I went to Cunningham. So I was crossing friends to where I was already right. skateboarding and listening to punk rock, but my friends weren't where I was living at. You know what I mean? So it was right. all like it, uh, exploring by yourself. So, so I, I always it. accepted the, that w- there's always going to be that one kid that looks afraid in the crowd because he is there by himself. So I like right. make it sh- make it a point like, hey, dude, what's up? Yeah, I never seen you out here before. You know, and then they yeah. open up. I ask, it's my first show. I say, well, fuck, come and have fun, dude. My name's so and so, whatever, bro. And then it's like mingling and then i'll get on stage and they're like what the fuck this dude singing up on stage is like yeah just like you dude i ain't nobody right. better you know what i mean i ain't nobody better yeah that's yeah. so awesome man and, and like you that's a perfect c- scenario right there you got that one guy that's kind of by himself not really talking to anybody and you didn't recognize him you're like hey that's a new that's a new cat right there i'm gonna go make him feel welcome and that you break yep. down the doors for for a person like that, and next thing you know, they're not only a, you know a follower of, of your band, but you start seeing them at every show you start going to. After that, you're like, "Hey, what's up?" And yeah. then he's he's not he's not Mister Quiet anymore. He's like, "Hey, what's going on, man? I'll meet you in the pit." Yeah, you know, and, yeah. But it all starts somewhere, dude. And and you know, I used to be that guy, you know, where you know maybe I didn't have my crowd to go to the show with. Air. maybe they couldn't get the night off but i'm still going to show up and and um but there's always somebody that that you recognize from the scene you so you're not by yourself for very yeah. long but hey i was that one guy too and and it's because my other friends that i ended up you know becoming b- starting relationships with they made me feel welcome they're like hey what's yeah. up you want a beer exactly. and you know, i was underage you want a beer sure hell yeah you know it's every, everybody just kind of looking out for each other too and uh you know thinking about that uh, about those old days, about the shows, was there a particular show that 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 stood out in your mind as as maybe like, hey, that's my favorite show from back in the day? Whether maybe it got rowdy, if whatever went down, is there a particular show that always comes to mind? And you're like, hey, that was a bad one. There was a lot of them. There was a lot of them. That okay, <laughs> I, can go, I can go back. You know, like give me a couple, at least a couple. Two. I want to say a good one would be well, we had a backyard party at our friend Rich Lard's house. Yeah. I want to say that was a a good old backyard party where there was kegs and it was all good. <laughs> no, no, no yeah. fights, nothing. But you know, the neighbors got mad and called the cops, and it got it got taken away. Me then there too. was okay. um uh. The one, the one that the two that come out in the video for Down for Life was uh, the end of racism. I want to say maybe ninety three. Uh, remember the old? Um, I want to say was it Supermix or Feudos on Morgan, and they had the upstairs hall. It was called yeah. Carpenters Hall, right there where actually where uh, Walgreens is at on Morgan. There, there was a building there. So they had a show, and uh, we're there, and a few guys fucking like who you know, you're you're in your metal scene. You're like, who are these guys? And these guys right. came into a punk rock show, and like, well, who the fuck are these guys? Well, they yeah. fucking start they start saluting, and we're oh all, shit, what the what fuck? The fuck? And my my friend Elias is all. Do it again. Boom. Next thing you know, we're fucking clicking some go. fucking Nazi skinheads' asses. You know? Yeah, right. And beat up yes. down, downstairs. And then you were Shit. there. I think maybe you won that fucking Halloween party at Zero's. Were you the pinhead? 
No, I wasn't. A, I haven't been a pinhead. No. Okay. It must have been someone else. Yeah. Well, it was it was a Halloween show at Zeros, uh-huh. and uh, a fight broke out inside. Oh, and shit. then we were kicking back outside where the guy that got his ass kicked came back with another friend and started shooting up zeros. Oh, were you shit. there? I, I wasn't there, but I heard about that because that yeah. shit didn't, you know, people would, people would always say, no, nah, I don't want to go to zeros. You're going to get shot. I would be like, hey, that happened once. That happened maybe <laughs> twice. All right, maybe twice. All right. But hey, we're there every weekend. Hey, you could dodge. You could dodge a bullet, right? The fucking Matrix. But I would always try to, you know, convince people, hey, my band's going to be playing. Come to zero. Nah, man, people get shot over there. Man, get over it. But you're right, dude. I remember hearing about that, dude. Somebody, you know, yeah, an they, irate they, customer, you know, came back and started fucking just shooting, you know, popping caps inside the fucking door. Yeah, we, we were Shit. actually outside and uh, and got the the first of it. We're out there, oh, my shit. friend uh, Giz, which uh, he was in a dead Laszlo's place. Uh, we were there kicking back by the trailer on the side door. Uh, and uh, we just hear, hey, motherfuckers. And we're all, huh? And you just hear, yeah. boom, 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 boom. And next thing you know, you hear, zing, zing. It's like, oh, shit, he's fucking shooting at us. So yeah. we run in. And everything stops. The next thing you know, the fucking doors get kicked in, and you just hear pa 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 pa. you just see everybody Holy jump, uh, throwing themselves to the floor. But yeah, yeah. Uh, and it happened that night. Uh, oh. He actually did get grazed by a bullet on his on his forearm, and uh, ended up going to uh, the hospital to go get it checked out, and. Uh, I want to say maybe about a week later, he ended up uh, calling off the tour with a uh, with that graze. But he's still Damn. out there. Giz is yeah. a brother that I keep in contact all the time with. So that's too close for comfort, right there, man. Son of a gun. Yeah. It could have been. It could have been me, Jesse yeah. Sachs. We were all right there. It was like four yeah. or five of us, and he ended up getting a, a graze on his on his forearm. I was all fuck. Damn, oh, yeah, those man. are those are some of the few. Yeah, some of the. Of, I get uh, it, man. Mem- you know, memorable shows. Some memorable ones that definitely, you know, um, I'm trying to think one off the. You know, I always kind of come back to the Crumb Sucker Show, man. Um, I liked it being there at the warehouse, uh, and I guess let me take it back to one other one. Uh, another place that, that we used to go see our shows at was. Um, Stardust, Stardust Ballroom. Did you make it to the DRI Sick of It All show? You remember that one? I was actually outside cruising the fucking parking lot. Oh shit! I, uh, All right. Uh, okay. and, and Uncle and Uncle Slam. I never made it inside, but we were out there. Uncle Slam. Yeah. Uh, uh, That's chilling. Really good one. Yeah. Yeah. Chilling outside. It was hey, one well, of those I'm... ones where, like, uh, I don't got money, dude, but let's just go cruising. Because uh, exactly, you know, our friend, our friend had a car. <laughs> yeah, right. Hell yeah, let's go hang out. Yeah, I know some people are gonna be at the show. We'll go hang out for a little while. Yeah, dude, good times, man. Great fucking times back then. All right, I tell you what, I want to get to another segment, and it's a segment I like to do with all my interviewees, and it's called Draw the Line. I'm gonna ask you some questions on new phone, and I want you to tell me who's your favorite out of these out of these subjects I'm gonna bring up. Now, there are going to be some bands you're familiar uh, with, and I'm, I try and make it tough. They're going to be kind of similar, and you're probably going to like both the bands, but that's that's the whole catch. I want to find out which band you like the best and why. So let's start at the top, man. What I got starting off is Total Chaos versus GBH. Which one in your book takes it? Who's your favorite? Uh, I've experienced total chaos on a personal level and <laughs> a real personal. I got a story for that one. We're actually in cool. San Antonio at, at the DMZ, right? I remember that. Yeah. DMZ and uh, rest in peace, Tony Outlaw. He he passed away. But, uh, you know, total chaos was playing and uh, it was one of those ones where the crowd was was pissed off 
And oh, hell. Uh, Rob Rob started had started talking shit to the crowd, and I'm standing oh, there shit. in the crowd, and um, next thing you know, I just feel like a breeze, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" And the next thing I look, well, Tony fucking threw a mic stand at the stage. Well, next oh, thing you man. know, it's it's when uh, Joe Bastard was still in the in the band, and this motherfucker was like six five, big old fucking dude, jumps off the stage and comes straight to me, and oh, I was all, "What's up?" I was all, "Oh fuck, all right, what's up? It's me and the crowd against you. What's up?" And everybody's like, ah, "Yeah, fuck it, oh, fuck. hey." They fucking demolished their fucking tour van. Flat tires, busted headlights, fucking busted windows. Like, it was all. Shouldn't have done that. Told you. Shouldn't have done that. But that's one story. And then, like I said, we were able to play with them when Sean Smash was in the band. And uh, they have a lot of good albums, but. I would have to go with GBH because that that's what that that's where I grew up in my heart. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's one of those CBA ones where my rats. It, yes. you you grow up and it's like Yeah. I the one yeah. chance I had to actually <laughs> see him in San Antonio. Yeah. Well, I had gotten in trouble with the law and I couldn't make that show. Damn I was it. on vacation. I yeah. was on vacation. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, yeah. God damn. Yeah, GBH kicks ass. I love yeah. GBH. Uh, yeah. They're still around, man. They're touring. They're fucking touring. They're still yeah. keeping it alive. They, they still yeah. tour. Colin and them are still kicking at yeah. it. You know, they're they're good friends with my friend, uh, the the Crumb Bums, Dave. Now Dave <laughs> sings for the – Dave actually sings for the casualties. So they they've been seeing a lot more of them, but yeah, yeah. GBH, All right. yeah, GBH it is. Well, you just mentioned one of the bands that I'm gonna put up uh, on the on drawing the line next, the Casualties, but I'm putting the Casualties up against the Exploited. Who do you like out of those two bands? Hey. that that was a <laughs> tough one. All right, but you want to know what? I would yeah. go with Jake. I would go with Jake and the Casualties. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah exploited, they... ex- exploited had him. Uh, you know, uh-huh. they they're the ones that that started that. You know, and, and sure, but yeah. Jake and Jake and uh, Meggers are still keeping it going, just as, just like Wadi. Wadi, I don't uh, know how yeah. long he's gonna last. Right. Wadi was spitting up fucking blood clots uh, this Ooh, past week. Fuck. Oh, yeah, man. He's, so he's he's yeah. in the hospital there oh, shit. testing him out, but yeah, yeah. But I'll well, go with, I'll go with the casualties on that. Uh, casualties take yeah, it. All yeah, right, that that and their family. I love it. That's right. Fuck yeah, and. Um, much love to Wadi. I hope he get healthy and get out of the hospital and get well while we're talking about him. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the next, the next two bands I'm going to go to, we just got word this week that they're going to be playing at Brewster Street, and I was freaking excited. I'm talking about Circle Jerks, and that's going to be badass. I can't wait to go to that one. Um, but I'm putting these guys against Circle Jerks up against Black Flag. Who do you favor out of those, those two bands? Circle jerks oh, on top, all right. no matter what. No shit. Okay. Yeah. I all mean, right. Yeah. Um. Hey, uh, you know. Go ahead. I can do. I can do black flag, but okay. they. Me to me, black flag is Keith Morris, and Chavo. Right. That's it. Chavo. You know when De- okay. when Dez when Dez came in and then Henry Rollins is uh. Yeah. Nah, but with Keith, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, I love the Keith yeah. stuff, dude. Yes, hell yeah! yeah. Like but, off so, of but circle, again. circle, circle jerks. I can listen from all their albums from the beginning to the end. 
And I've had a chance to see Circle Jerks already in San Antonio, so I know they're I know they're a little bit older, but I guarantee you, if you know your Circle Jerks, uh, they're gonna be yeah. playing every single hit that, that you're gonna be singing along the whole fucking set. Badass. So, That's what I want, man. Except, except, you know, except, go ahead. I, you know, I love the Circle Jerks. I really like I like your stuff, like off a of wonderful. You know, they're really, yeah. kind of, you know, when you compare like uh, Golden Shower Hits and Wonderful, they're almost like night and day. But, you know, I love that, that, um, uh, well, let me see, let me take it back. Not Golden Shower Hits, but Group Sex. Group Sex is really, you know, that first one, it, it has that kind of like early DRI kind of feel. Short, fast right. songs, you know, real fun. And then by the time they get to Wonderful, you're talking about the three to four minute songs. But they're you know songs like i and i um uh building the bomb you know great fucking wonderful um i love it man i can't wait to see them and i hope they throw down those jams and maybe some shit like off of circle jerk six like beat me senseless casualty vampire they just kept on getting better man they they got well if you you go to uh their facebook yeah uh their set list is about six foot high oh shit (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you can see you can Badass. see the actual set list that they're gonna play, and yeah. uh, they're they're not fucking around like. Fuck but yeah, yeah. But when I did when I did see them, I kept on saying I wanted to hear "Killing for Jesus." Uh, yeah. Keith Morris was not fucking having it. He got pissed off. He told because me something. Really but, uh, I kept on saying I want to hear "Killing yeah. for Jesus" uh, through the whole set, and he finally had. <laughs> He had told me something, but I was already I was already wasted drunk. It didn't matter. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah. That's the jam, man. That's the jam but, right there. No, I don't think I don't think they play uh making the bomb and killing for Jesus on those uh, all off right. of that album. Yeah. Like the, how about fifteen minutes? You remember that one? Fifteen minutes? I like that bass line on there. That's a killer one. Yeah. I think it's about getting what gonorrhea or syphilis or something. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, good stuff. Let me go on to our next guys. How about how about these heavy hitters, Motorhead versus Metallica? Who do you favor out of those two bangers? Man, they're both good. And I already had heard Motorhead before, but it's just something off of that. The the Kill 'Em All just destroyed everything. So it's, it's <laughs> and and it's still to this day like people are like yeah Metallica, and I'm one of those one dickhead fucking people is like yeah Metallica but anything after Kill 'Em All can fucking suck it and they're all really dude <laughs> really I was like yeah, yeah. Dude, anything after Kill 'Em All you know no but you know I'm just <laughs> joking but yeah Kill 'Em All is the one that that took it like I'm telling you what a game yeah, changer yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, you know, and, and Motorhead, Motorhead was going strong way before them. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? And, yeah. and uh, they, I believe, they already even had played with Chromex before Metallica even came, or did Metallica come first and then and then Motorhead? Man, I, the, I know exactly. You're talking about Chromex and 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 the Agnostic Front. No, it's Chromex and um, Motorhead. And then yeah. the other one was Metallica and, and Wasp. That's so close, Arnulfo. I'm not too sure. I don't know which one came first. But, you know, was already get, getting a little dose of, of Motorhead on MTV, seeing their videos for, like, Iron Fist and yeah. fucking uh, and, and Ace of Spades. Shit, man. You're like, man, and they already looked like they were already, you know, 40 and 50s already, dude. Because, you know, Lemmy wasn't they looking were, like a young were. fuck. But you know, as I as I started getting into into Motorhead, I realized Lemmy's a fucking lifer, dude. He's been in bands since he was like a you know 12, 13 years old from the grassroots of of, uh, of England, getting it going. Yeah. And there's pro- there's probably nobody <laughs> else has probably seen or done more than fucking Lemmy, man, because he's just been in Europe, America, just had it all, had it all, man. Yeah. And you know, yeah, a band like there, Metallica. There Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say a band like Metallica, you know, 
shows the proper respects to to a band like Motorhead by covering a couple of their songs, uh, by inviting Lemmy to go in there and fucking record with them and shit like that. And yeah. you know, it, I'm sure it was a dream come true for 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 Het and the rest of the guys Metallica to to, to bring Motorhead into the studio and do a song with them. And, oh yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, how awesome is that? Uh, Lar- Lars was ecstatic about it, you know, because he's yeah, from he's right. from he's from originally overseas, ain't he? And yeah, he got that he... bug early on. Yeah, yeah. Oh so, shit. So, but kill them all. That's where you're at with it, man. I love it, man. The shit. That was a game changer. I still, I still like, I am who I am. Uh, like I said, I grew up in the in the rock and metal, but when I yeah. found out punk rock, but like like today, I still got I got my vest and it's got jump in the fire back patch on it. So. <laughs> Bad yeah. ass. holding true, man. OG. Yeah. Well, I got a I got a couple more for us. Now this uh-huh. one, this one right here. I mentioned him earlier. I'm talking about Scarhead. Who do you prefer between Scarhead and Sick of It All? Uh, I would have to go with Sick of It All. Uh, all Danny, right. Danny, Danny, Dan, Danny's good, but yeah, Sick of It All, Sick of It All. Uh, you know, they they were before them, but uh, Scar Scarhead has their own sound, and it's good. True, I jam all yeah. their, all of it, but. Uh, I have to go with sick of it all on that one. We we I, all I uh, we all knew us. What you all knew? What what do you all knew? A shirt. Oh, he okay. Was in Europe <laughs> and tore a shirt. Bad he had, ass, he had a chacho shirt and tore it up. He tore it out over there. So we we need to send we need to send him a shirt. Get, get him, him another. Get one, him man. going again. A chacho feel- shirt. I feel there's a little sick of it all in drastic actions, man. You know what I mean? I feel there's oh, yeah. a little bit right there, dude. And uh, that's that's totally a, a compliment, man. Because those Collar Brothers, dude, they even wrote a book. They they've seen it all, and I love sick of it all. They they just they 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 always bring that energy to the fucking stage. And yeah, um, the lyrics about empowerment, about just fucking rising above your 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 everyday challenges your obstacles and fucking dealing with the grind and making the best of it and fucking overcoming and kicking ass. And oh, yeah. they're, they're always on the up and up, you know, they're real positive, man. And, and, and I, I dig that. And, um, uh, seeing those guys, t- t- you know, kick ass over here last year at the house of rock was, uh, one of the best shows of the year. Definitely was. Yep. They owed us now that the- show. They owed us that show, huh? Yeah, they <laughs> it's been there a while, right? Like, a long while. There, there was a post come with Murphy's right. Law, and their yeah. van broke down in Florida, and Murphy's Law that's came by right. themselves. Yeah. yeah, I forgot that. That's the rest of the story, right there. Yep, they were first mm-hmm. supposed to be with with the Murphy's Law tour. Son yep. of a bitch! Damn it, man. Okay, well, I got one more, and I saved it for the end because these two singers right here really define New York hardcore. And I'm talking about John Joseph from the cro and Roger Merritt from Agnostic Front. Which one do you favor? Who's your favorite uh, out of them two? Well, you know who I'm going with. I and think so, man. Roger. Family, family, that right? Would, that would yeah. have to be Roger. All now, right, I'm, all I, right. We, I played with both bands, and John Joseph's, you know, a real nice guy. Man. It's... Agnostic front was where where it was at for me. Kick so. ass, kick ass. Let me yeah. ask you real quick: How many gigs have you played with Agnostic? Man, um, five, we brought six. Them, <laughs> we brought them down yeah. in two thousand. That was the first time they came. We took them to Center Theater. I want to oh, say, yeah. Okay. All the times that we brought them, I want to say we played with them maybe like four or five times. All right. Like that. Yeah. Super cool, man. And and and, and each time it, it's it's like catching up after the last time, you know, Vinny Stigma, and it's 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 incredible how how they remember your names, man. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. 
Uh, I, I freaked out when I when I saw Vinny the second time after I met him. He's like, Tony. I was like, what the fuck? You know me? Damn, man. Wow, Vinny. I was like, hey, I'm not worthy. And uh, just, just you know, uh, the best guys, man. You know, uh, oh, family, yeah. man. You, you, uh, you, you, uh, you, for, for my family, for my friends. And, you know, that's kind of, that's, that's, I feel like that's, that's where drastic actions is coming from too. For my family, yeah. for my friends, for us, you know, they, yeah. it's what we do. If you, if you leave a mark on somebody, you know, they're, they're especially, yeah. you know, we, we're musicians and you meet a lot of people, but you know, if you leave a mark on somebody in a certain city, especially like yeah. a small, a small city, like Corpus Christi, you know, that's right. And, uh, they'll come back and they'll they'll remember you even though they see yeah. thousands and thousands of faces they'll come back and it's it's funny because uh my friend this was years ago uh i want to say maybe around 2005 he disappeared well we found out that he had left and uh he went to go live with his family in europe his dad was stationed out there and um well, he goes to a festival out there, and it's Agnostic Front. And he's yeah, like, hey, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Hey, uh, I'm from Corpus Christi, blah, blah, blah. And it was like they put him to the test, and uh, he goes, dude, it's like they didn't believe me. And the first thing out of their words was, uh, do you know the brothers from Corpus Christi? And he goes, <laughs> Mike and Arnulfo? And they're like, yeah, yeah. you're from there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> That's badass. But yeah. oh, priceless. Hell yeah. Well, that was the last one I had for us today on Draw the Line on Newfold. Those are some great. Yeah, I, I, I could agree with you on all of those right there, man. And um, I need you. I need to know how can people keep up with you um, on social media? How can they find you on Instagram, your Facebook, for instance? How can they keep well, up with ill-adjusted and drastic actions also? Uh, you can keep up with me on Instagram. Uh, you just look up my name on there, Arnulfo Gutierrez, and it'll pop up on uh, Facebook or on uh, Instagram. Also with drastic actions, you can look up drastic actions and we pop up. And uh, Ill-adjusted, I believe, is ill-adjusted TX for Texas. Um, okay. there's nobody else with it, but I put TX in there. So all right. You can keep up with us. So, you know, uh, I'm not too social on the intermediate, but when I do uh when I do post, I'm there. I try to keep yeah. up. You know, I'm an older cat, I don't really post too much of uh stuff on on uh Facebook and, and uh Instagram, but you know, I keep up with the bands and stuff like that because that's more, more of what's going on than my personal life. You know what I mean? So yeah, I dig it. Uh, you can find you can find it out there on Ufu Gutierrez on both Instagram and Facebook, or um, Drastic Actions on Facebook and, and Ill Adjusted. And Ill Adjusted is actually on Instagram also. If you can look them up on Instagram, you can find them on there. Awesome, yep. man. Awesome. You know, I had a great time talking with you today, Ar Arnufo. And I need all my listeners out there to go to Facebook, look up Arnufo's Gutierrez, give him a like on his Facebook, go to Drastic Actions, give him a like, go to YouTube and look up Drastic Actions and check out those videos, man. They've got some great shots out there. And get ready for ill adjusted when it get ready to drop the bomb here in Corpus Christi or when it hits San Antonio or any other spot in Texas. You guys get ready because these guys are going to hit hard. Arnufo, thanks so much for being my guest today on the Tony Gomez show. Um, you want to say thank you for everybody? having me? Oh, man. It's been a pleasure. Later, honor's everybody. Been... Excellent, man. The honor's been mine. Thanks a lot, Arnufo. Guys, thanks a lot for listening today, and we'll see you at the show. See ya.